Hello, my name is Jonathan Biznet. Today I'm going to look at transistor amplification. Uh, I actually plan on putting together a series of videos looking at, at transistor amplifiers using various biasing methods. In this case, what we have is a common emitter amplifier, and it's using a base biasing uh, to accomplish the amplification. Uh, so, give, kind of give you a little better look at uh, what we have here. Uh, you'll see I've got, uh, trying to move this around to get you a good picture. We've got a, in this case, a 2N3904 transistor. It's an NPN BJT. And I've got uh, a resistor between the positive rail and the collector a resistor between the positive rail and the base and then uh, the emitter is tied directly to the ground rail or the negative rail. And I've also got a couple of uh, 15 microfarad capacitors to handle coupling uh, so that we don't put too much load directly onto uh, the transistor for amplification. Uh, so anyway I'm going to look at, at all of these and I will provide in this video a link, uh, a URL to a blog that goes into all the mathematics and calculations I use to come up with this particular biasing as well as the schematic for the uh, for the circuit. Uh, basically though I into this circuit I put in uh, off the frequency generator I put in a uh, about a 10k oh, uh, 10k Hertz uh, sine wave signal and what you'll see here is if we look at the uh, look at the oscilloscope, the in the input signal, uh, each of those divisions is roughly uh, 20 milliamps. So what you really got is about a 40 excuse me 20 millivolts. So what you've really got is about a 40 millivolt uh, peak to peak sine wave going into the uh, into the circuit. And then if I switch it over to the second channel, what you'll see is each of the divisions here is about uh, one volt, so you'll see I've got slightly more than four volts peak to peak uh, on the output. So doing that calculation, four volts over 40 millivolts, we're getting almost a, an amplification of a hundred. Uh, so if I compare the two, the other thing you'll note here is that the input and the output signals are 180 degrees out of phase, which is standard for a common emitter amplifier. Uh, the reason being is, be is because you're pulling the output off the collector, uh, and basically there is no resistance between the emitter and ground. So as the base become, as the voltage on the base increases, the transistor moves more and more towards a short type condition, in which case it's pulling the output towards ground and when the uh, when the input signal starts going low on the base that will cause the transistor to become more and more resistive uh, adding into the overall resistance of the circuit and pushing the collector output more towards the positive rails so basically a low input gives you a high output high input gives you a low output so you get that 180 degree out of phase condition uh, in this type of amplification. Anyway, that's really all there is to this circuit. I thought I'd keep it relatively simple and the URL should, uh, if you go visit that blog, uh, you'll see kind of what I've done and certainly more information on it. Uh, you'll also see a number of posts related to other types of biasing and then eventually some more videos and circuits on other types of transistor biasing. Thank you.